Dear friends of free knowledge, while more and more people are coming online, over 90% of people in the 49 least developed countries remain totally unconnected. This statement may be found in the September 2013 report of the UN Broadband Commission. A striking statement. And maybe the easiest way to show you the importance of disseminating knowledge and information offline, complementary to all activities that we do online. Hello, my name is Florence Devoir. I have been a Wikipedian for the past 19 years. And I've been involved into the Wikimedia community under different capacities, such as an editor on the French Wikipedia, uh, a former chairwoman on the board of trustees of Wikimedia Foundation, a co-founder of Wikimedia France, and more recently, a co-founder of uh, Wiki in Africa, which is a, a Cape Town uh, based small non-profit organization that seeks to change the single, the single story about Africa. And since 2013, I have been more particularly involved in the development of the Wikimedia communities in Africa um, to increase awareness to Wikipedia and to foster higher contribution rates to the encyclopedia. And today I would like to tell you about using offline tools to build open content and introduce to the open knowledge movement. First, let me clarify exactly what I mean by offline. In 2021, the distinction between online and offline is most likely to be seen as a distinction between um, computer-mediated communication, such as Zoom meeting, versus face-to-face -face communication, such as attending a conference in mid-space. So, online, offline, this is not what I mean by offline in the context of this presentation. So, what do I mean by offline? Let's revert to Wikipedia for a clarification of the word offline. So in computer technology and telecommunication, online indicates a state of connectivity and offline a disconnected state. In other words, an internet connection. There are many people across the planet who do not enjoy the possibility of being online. Let's get a few figures here. Ten years ago, the global community witnesses the significant impact and widespread adoption of mobile telecommunication across the world. But internet usage and broadband were still at very low level of adoption, especially in developing countries. Internet usage in the least developed countries, LDCs in 2010, was only 5.5% of the population. And even worse, LDCs had mobile and fixed broadband subscription that were both less than 1% of their population level. Back then, the UN Commission called for, I quote, a common vision of broadband inclusion for all, stressing the catalytic power of ICTs and broadband in particular as a critical enabler for effective and sustainable solutions to the greatest global challenges in poverty, health, education, gender equality, climate change, and population shifts. So, a healthy collection of targets was set up to improve the situation back in 2010. What is the situation 10 years later in 2020? So according to the latest data, global internet user penetration went from 29% to 53% in 2020, and in LDCs, it went from 5.5 to 19%. All of that is certainly an improvement, but it's still very low. It is important to note that, in fact, many people are not completely offline. They do have limited and expensive access to internet through their cell phones. 
But many of those cell phones are not smartphones. So the online experience of those users is very different from the experience people in the most country, uh, developed countries enjoy. Limited bandwidth, uh, low tech phones, difficulty to access the internet to recharge the phones, or reason to explain a limited access to internet. The people may be able to enjoy the internet to a certain degree, but in a degraded state. So, in short, it improved over the past 10 years, but the situation will not be fixed anytime soon. Stéphane Coyematillon, current CEO of Kiwix, said it best, I quote, It took 30 years for the web to reach the richest half of the world. Getting to the bottom half will be the hard part. So for all the talk of satellites and balloons, I see a need for offline access to help the disadvantaged who won't be able to afford a satellite link anytime soon. There are other reasons which explain why people might have difficulties to access the internet. And one of those is the cost of data. The high cost of broadband services led the Commission to set affordability target as the main focus of its advocacy efforts back in 2010. At that time, it defied a maximum of 2% of monthly gross national income per capita by 2025. So 10 years later, what's the situation? Well, in 2020, at least 40 countries in the world uh, have an entry-level mobile broadband service that costs 5% or more, up to 20%. Last, if we want to fully cover the topic, we must mention that there are also people who are not having good access to internet, even in developed countries. For example, think of the homeless. Think of the hospital residents. Think of the people living in prisons. Think of the people who are living in remote areas in the mountain. And of course, unfortunately, think of all the people who live in nations plagued with censorship. So there are many, many reasons why a significant number of human beings are denied the privilege of accessing the information that is available on the internet and are also denied the privilege of participating to its creation. And when I am saying a significant number of people, I am talking of four billion people. I am now putting on my hat as a Wikipedian dinosaur. Wikipedian live with a shared vision. Imagine a world in which every single person on the planet would be given free access to the sum of all human knowledge. For Wikipedian people in disconnected or poorly connected status are doubly impacted. First negative impact of being offline, they cannot generally access the wealth of information that is available on the web in particular, they cannot access Wikipedia, the biggest encyclopedia of all time. Please allow me to remind you of a few key elements about Wikipedia. Second negative impact of being offline, people cannot be actors of their own lives. And more specifically, they cannot participate to the creation of this fantastic resource that is Wikipedia. Beside denying them a voice, it also means a loss of super valuable information that could be shared with anyone to create a more complete, accurate, non-biased encyclopedia. So, what can we do to make it so that even without an internet connection or a poor internet, people would still be able to access some of the content and to a certain extent be able to participate to its creation? This is when we get into what we call offline tools. A 
A few years after the creation of Wikipedia, some editors started exploring ways to distribute offline versions of the encyclopedia. This is permitted thanks to the license, because the whole project is published under a free license, at that time the GFDL. Thus, anyone can freely download Wikipedia and customize the content according to their own needs to create a comprehensive educational product. This is what SOS Children's Village, the world's largest orphan charity, did with the creation of the Wikipedia selection for schools. In 2005, just four years after the launch of Wikipedia, SOS Children's Village UK began exploring different educational projects that would benefit the children both in the UK and abroad. And their goal was to create an offline Wikipedia version that was child safe, free from vandalism, and could easily be used by individuals without an internet connection. Additionally, the staff also wanted to customize the content so that it would complement the UK curriculum. SOS Children CEO and Wikipedian Andrew Kate explained how they prepared the content. I quote, We took all the featured and good articles and removed esoterical or material not suitable for children. The community at Wikipedia suggested other articles which we looked at. They weren't good articles in all subjects we wanted. By 2006, they released their first version, and the next year, the second version. And the releases were available on CDs and DVDs. That was another time. And uh, not surprisingly, the Wikipedia selection for school was very well received across the globe, so much that some organizations, such as the Shuttleworth Foundation, uh, decided to uh, distribute it in South Africa. This is a, an initiative I remember very vividly, and I still have in a box somewhere some of these very early CDs from SOS Children's Village. In 2021, Kiwi sits at the heart of the offline ecosystem. It is a free and open source offline web browser. It was first launched to allow offline access to Wikipedia a few years in the past, but has since then expanded to include many other projects such as Wikibooks, Wikiquotes, Wiktionary, uh, as, a, as well as a public domain text from Project Gutenberg, uh, many TEDx videos, content from the Khan Academy, uh, from Stack Exchange, some YouTube educational videos. You can propose your own resources. So how does it work? Sometimes the internet doesn't work as well as you'd want it to. This is where we can help. Qix allows you to pack up to 400 gigabytes of data onto a single micro SD card. Plug it into your Raspberry Pi and you're ready to go. Any device within range can connect to a bespoke network with your content on it. And you can browse Wikipedia, watch videos, or learn from thousands of websites that are now available offline. No matter where you are in the world, connectivity is not an issue anymore. So this is the website where you can get information and of course to download the content. Uh, it should be noted that there's also an HTTP server version which is called Kiwix Serves, which allows computer to host Kiwix content and make it available to other computers on their local network. An important element I would uh, mention as well is that all content files are compressed into a ZIM format, which makes them smaller, saving disk space and bandwidth, but leaves them easy to index, search, and selectively decompress. The ZIM files are small enough that they can be stored uh, on the user's mobile phones, computers, or small inexpensive hotspot. And you might actually be super surprised, but uh, the entirety of the English language of Wikipedia with pictures uh, as of March 2021 only represent 82 gigabytes, which is enough to fit on a 
large USB stick. So in 2020, um, Kiwix had more than 4, hand, 4 million users that they are aware of in over 200 countries and territories. And one of the big learnings that they shared with us is, uh, has been that users search for easily actionable content rather than super powerful technology. When it comes to offline, size of the content does matter as you don't want to download something that you do not need. To close on the Kiwix matter, I'll also mention the existence of the Zimit tool. Uh, it's quite simple. If you want an offline version of a website, just Zimit. Now, when we discuss offline, it is very important to note that there are three main elements to be discussed. The first element is technology. What is the technological solution that is, uh, that is bringing the content to the user? The second important element is the content that is actually uh, put in the hands of the user. And the third element are the action programs that actually bring the technology and the content to the end offline user. So we have already seen a very important central piece of the technology. Let's dive a little bit deeper into technology before moving on to content. So I already mentioned that Kiwix was an essential element in the infrastructure. However, Kiwix is only for readers. It is only for consumers of information. A few years in the past, the Wiki in Africa Association, which I co-lead with uh, Ayla Hadoflot, has decided to develop a new tool with the help of Kiwix people, and that tool is called Wikifundi. Wikifundi is an offline editing environment that mimics the experience of editing Wikipedia or Wikidia and that provides a bridging experience for training, creation, and collaboration. It has been designed to facilitate three distinct sectors. One, education, as an easy-to-use teaching tool for schools and education programs to teach how to read and analyze Wikipedia articles or Wikidia articles, or to teach how to create and contribute to the encyclopedia, transferring digital, social, and academic skills. Second sector, outreach. As a tool that facilitates Wikimedia user groups and volunteers when building the Wikimedia movement by providing a way to collectively edit in offline situations. And the third sector, entrepreneurship as a simple wiki platform used by individuals or groups, small groups, of digitally skilled entrepreneurs in poorly connected area to create documents such as resumes, business plans, take meeting notes, produce reports, and so on. So the goal of Wikifundi is really to assist, to help bridge the gap between those online and those not so online. For example, we are from Public Insurance and we can write an article about where we come from, which is, uh, for example, which is nice. So we can write an important article, maybe let's say, for example, about our home. Technology is one thing. Now let's talk about the content itself. In most cases, the content that is being proposed on the Kiwix system is proposed as is. It has either been identified by the Kiwix team as interesting, or it is proposed by external parties, such as myself. For example, the Wiki in Africa Association has curated a collection of offline resources in English, French, and Spanish, in relation to the Wikimedia movement. This is quite unique. So if you're interested by those resources or want to add elements to the collection, please get in touch with me. Making available content offline also requires some precaution from a legal perspective. First, 
Copyright. Interested parties need to be careful with the copyright status of the resource shared offline. Most of the content distributed offline is under a free license, such as CC BY or CC BY ASA, or it is in the public domain. However, it is also possible to find OER resources under slightly more restrictive license, such as non-commercial. Second, whilst online resources are quite simple to take down in case there is a legal issue reported, it is way more complicated for offline resources, which by definition cannot be easily retrieved, removed from public access. It is complicated to also track users made of the resource, which users by who or when or why is frequently unknown information. The distributor of offline resources may face the poor understanding of legal consideration, in particular of licenses, by their end users. This is one of the reasons why I developed in 2020 a set of um, educational resources in French for teachers to explain intellectual property rights, use of creative commons and how to attribute authors. This set of resources is available under a free license and its creation was supported by the Creative Commons Open Education Platform Activity Fund. Qu'est-ce qu'une œuvre Toute création réalisée par un être humain est une œuvre. La personne qui crée l'œuvre est appelée auteur. Au départ, L'auteur a une idée, une intention, et il crée ce que l'on appelle une œuvre de l'esprit. L'œuvre peut être matérialisée sous différentes formes. Un dessin, un morceau de musique, une peinture, du texte, du code informatique, mais aussi une vidéo, chorégraphie, maquette, scénario de film, photographie, un masque rituel, un graffiti, un tissage, une sculpture. L'auteur a tous les droits d'exploitation de son œuvre. C'est ce qu'on appelle les droits d'auteur. Le droit d'auteur s'applique automatiquement sur l'œuvre dès sa création. Mais ce, à trois conditions. L'œuvre crée... Due to spaces restriction and maybe to decrease legal risk, it is sometimes preferred to not distribute a fully packed resource, but instead to provide a curated, smaller knowledge set. This is what the Wiki project met participants found out when they started working on their medical offline resources. Wikimed project mission is to make clear, reliable, comprehensive, up-to-date educational resources and information in healthcare, biomedical and related social sciences freely available to all people online and offline. The initial content comes from Wikipedia, but was curated and translated in many different languages. The Wiki Project Med has launched phone application that contains all or parts of Wikipedia healthcare, medication, anatomy, and sanitation content. The content is a repository of life-saving healthcare information for thousands of doctors and nurses across the world. The underlying technology, of course, is curious, as usual. And the team found out that there was a real need for an application providing short versions of medical articles rather than full super detailed Wikipedia version. So the Wikimed project doesn't only provide content through a phone application, but also through different distribution means such as internet in the box, uh, which are complete single board computers with an inbuilt Wi-Fi hotspot such as this type of little box. The box is the size of a cell phone battery and of a price of about $30. It can connect up to 32 users of medical content, which is otherwise not available in that area. 
For example, in India alone, there are still over 800 million people who do not have access to internet. The South Asia version of the box, which is displayed on, on this uh, press article, uh, contained the full medical Wikipedia set in 23 Indian languages, plus many other medical, emergency, healthcare, and uh, nutrition resources. An essential element in the success of an offline operation is partnership. Local partners will get involved in locally bringing the tools to the end users and training people to use them. Very important. One such example is the case of the Open West Foundation user group who runs the Kiwix for Schools initiative. During Wikimania 2021, uh, Ruby D. Brown and Maxwell Begamin explain how they have used Kiwix as a tool to enhance equitable access to educational resources during the pandemic. The mission was to visit schools in several regions of Ghana and introduce students to Wikipedia and Kiwix from a methodology perspective. Ofwa proposed a mini fund and shortlisted 10 Wikimedia volunteers in Ghana to implement the Kiwix training in schools of their region. They provided the volunteers with material as well as capacity training, and the initiative is still going on in 11 schools in five Ghana region with over 400 participants so far. Amongst the challenges they were met were, well, the obvious lack of ICT skills in the schools, but also a serious lack of infrastructure with only one computer for 99 students on average. It was also complicated to set up the Kiwix system from a hard drive a day before the event and their team concluded they would rather use a Raspberry Pi in the future. Finally, it turned out that there was very little content available on the Kiwix system localized which was not very motivating for the student. Unfortunately, it is a very well-known issue that there is limited content about Africa on Wikipedia, though we are trying very, very hard to bridge the knowledge gap. For students today, the internet has become a second home. It's where they go to play, to express themselves, and of course, to get information. Platforms like Wikipedia have placed vast amounts of knowledge at their fingertips, from the history of the cuckoo clock, to the houses of Hogwarts, to the outer rings of Saturn. But when it comes to Africa, its people, histories and communities, the available information remains imbalanced and incomplete, if it's even there at all. This reinforces a negative, single-story narrative of Africa, where students don't see their realities reflected, leaving them feeling disempowered, excluded and their voices neither valued nor valuable. Wiki Africa Schools is a non-profit project that helps students write Wikipedia articles about their local communities and interests. We work with schools to make Wikipedia a part of their curriculum by training teachers and providing this neat little box that when plugged into power gives access to Wikifundi, an environment that mimics the experience of editing Wikipedia without the need for a reliable web connection. Students learn invaluable technical skills by researching, writing, and publishing their own articles, and the importance of collaboration, peer review, and critical thinking. And once their finished articles are added to Wikipedia, schools transform from knowledge receivers into producers. Once ignored communities are put on the map. Please allow me to mention an ongoing initiative to provide localized content about Africa. The Wiki Challenge Ecole d'Afrique is a writing contest run annually in primary school of French speaking Africa using Wikifundi. Every year, the Wiki Challenge allows 9 to 12 years old kids to, to write about their own culture. Many of them never use the internet in their life, and the content they produce is actually super refreshing and fascinating. The project itself is a result of a partnership involving on one hand 
de Fondation Orange, Running Educational Programs Through Its Digital School Program in Francophone Africa, with local foundation to help implement locally. And on the other hand, Wiki in Africa supported by several national Wikimedia user groups. The life cycle of the articles the children produce is quite interesting. The cycle starts with the setup of the technology in the schools, continues with the training of the teachers, then the kids write the articles on Wikifundi. The articles are collected by local facilitators and then added to the online Wikidia encyclopedia. The content of Wikidia is then collected by Kiwix and added to the offline resources set. And later, sometimes much later, the school resources will be updated with new versions. This can represent an over one year cycle. And this is actually a very important point to stress. Knowledge produced, published online, may be available for online readers within seconds to minutes. In the offline world, there may be months, if not years, between the moment knowledge is recorded from the moment it is made available for the end user. So I would like to briefly mention two other interesting initiatives. Uh, the first one is Solar Spell. Solar Spell is an education initiative from Arizona State University that combines appropriate technology, relevant content, and local capacity building. In the same um, line than the old SOS Children project, they propose a curated list of articles from Wikipedia. 10,000 articles were selected uh, with a lighter process than SOS Children and plus lots of other content. They are mostly active in Pacific Island and East Africa. The last experience I would like to tell you about is the Ladakhipedia. In villages of the Indian Himalayas of Ladakh, over 75% of student and adult learners have had no access to learning since the start of the COVID-19 crisis. Many places don't have 3G towers in their village most can't afford the high debt cost uh, data charges. Other areas have been disrupted by borders dispute. The border with the China has been closed since the 60s and the one with Pakistan is a little bit complicated. So the project aims to bridge this by creating a mesh net in these remote villages so any learners of any age can access the service from their home, schools and offices. They load one terabyte SD cards with the best quality open source learning material. This includes a radio station as well as Ladakipedia. Both ways constitute a way for young people to gain 21st century skills and to keep tradition alive. The local Ladakhi language is losing ground because of the pressure on learning the English language so that they use it to create entries about their home village and about their culture and about their mod in all that in their mother tongue. And here I'd like to insist that suitable technology and great content are not sufficient to improve the way people who have limited or no access to internet can access free or an open knowledge. Also important are one, to better understand barriers that prevent people around the world from accessing information online. Is that a question uh, of technology, cost, language, censorship, ICT skills, gender inequalities, anything else? Two, to give opportunities to open knowledge advocate, open content creators and open source de developers to get to know one another. In the Wikimedia world, we have created an affiliate user group, Wikimedians for Offline Wikis. This is a disparate group of uh, individuals united by the same desire to bring in closure in, connect in the connectivity gap. Some are working on software, 
other on open source, portable and offline wireless mesh network, yet others are involved in creating or curating good content, yet others are locally bringing the tools and training people to use them. The group fosters good collaboration. And last, last, partnership. We do need partnership with organizations locally involved with the population. It may be partnering with schools, libraries, uh, knowledge centers, um, relief organizations working in refugee camps, associations providing ICT services, women activist organizations and so on. Only those organizations can provide the last mile. Dear friends of free knowledge, it is uh, more or less the end of my presentation. The world in 2021 is in a state of flux. Much progress has been made globally over the past 10-15 years in expanding access to and adoption of infrastructure and services. However, significant challenges remain in tackling digital inequalities and in accelerating efforts toward achieving not only access to, but also participation to the global pool of knowledge. Open source tools and freely licensed content can help. Still, there are relatively few projects centered on developing offline access. Like most of the free and open source project, software project, the main problem most people have is simply being aware that they exist. So, Today, I hope I help bring more visibility on a few of those solutions. Uh, please check out the link I provide below the video to learn more about all these offline initiatives and mostly stay safe. <laughs> Harunye, harunye.